Okay, back with another video about Perlin noise. I've got, so far I've got the basics of Perlin noise and what this particular sketch is doing is just tying the X position of a circle to Perlin noise values over time. What I want to do in this video is show you two things. One is I want to add the Y axis just to sort of see what happens if I do that. And then also show you how to actually graph those values over time as opposed to just seeing sort of a single value over time, which may be useful, I think. So um, let's do that briefly. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, um, now what's really confusing here, ah, is that I kind of was about to type y off equals zero. And that's not really a good idea. <laughs> because in the next video, I'm actually gonna look at two-dimensional Perlinoids. What does it mean for Perlinoids to exist in two-dimensional space? And in that say it sense, I'm really gonna have an x offset and a y offset. I don't really have a y offset. Really what I have is I have a y value where I want the ellipse to be. So I could do this, right? And then put y here, right? I'm just going to add a y value, which is also mapped to noise. And I could you know, have that be mapped between 0 and height. And then draw the ellipse at x and y. So let's see what happens there. But you can see it's just moving now along the diagonal. Why is that? Because the x and y values are always equal. Because I am asking for. I think we're going to need a visual reference here. So I'm going to really attempt to get a nice, right? This is the graph of Perlin noise. If I'm saying, hey, draw a circle at an x, y position and have the x value be tied to this part of noise and have the y value be tied to this part of noise, <laughs> I'm going to, x and y are going to be equal, meaning in the canvas, if x and y are equal, it's somewhere along this diagonal. So what I want to do is I want to have x and y both be Perlin noise values, but not be equal. So I could have an entirely other Perlin noise space, one dimensional space, and get the y values from that. Another thing I could do is I could just say, hey, let me just get the y values from some other part. Like I'll, I'll get the x values from here, and I'll get the y values from over there. So in that sense, what I need are two x offsets. Like I want an x offset one that starts at 0, and an x offset 2 that starts somewhere else like really far away. How about 10,000? And so I want the x value from, the, from one offset, the y value from another offset, and both of these, they move through Perlin noise space. You know, eventually x off 1 is going to get all the way to 10,000, and you're going to see repeating values. But it's going to take so much time, and x offset 2 will be somewhere else, you'll never notice that. So let's look at this. And now you can see I have this kind of is almost like wandering, sporadic, bee buzzing like behavior. It's kind of nice, actually. I got to move the mouse out of the way. Um, so I don't know. It's, this is actually, I think, I kind of, I think this is a good moment to. Uh, oh no, I don't. I don't have. I don't have this prepared. <laughs> right. This is a visual representation of Berlin noise and music. Okay. <sighs> Coding rainbow. Okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, so this is the idea. I forgot what I was doing because I was just so excited that I had a moment to do something weird. Um, anyway, so you get the idea. Now let's think about, you know, it's kind of interesting. Oh, there's so much that I want to keep going with this. Like what if I put the y values a little bit behind, you know. But anyway, this, this, this gets, gives you the basic idea. Now let's do one more thing in this particular video. <laughs> and... Um, uh, yes, so uh, in the chat a question is asked, and this question might be around, can't you give two-dimensional arguments to noise? And I could do that, and I'm going to do that in a moment, and in fact that's how I'm really going to deal with the two-dimensional space. But I'm showing you a kind of a way of getting multiple kind of single values for two different parameters using two different parts of the noise space. I know that's confusing, but it will all become clear, or if it doesn't become clear, then all I have to say to you is... <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I have a cold. So nothing is going well. All right. Um, okay. Oh, it's very hot in here. Okay. Um, so anyway, okay, I was going to graph the values now because I, I don't know what I should be edited out of this, this, this particular. All right. Let's graph the values because I think that's going to be useful. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to... Um, Comment some of this stuff out. And 
I am going to write now a little for loop. So what I want to do is I'm going to say var x, and I'm going to write var x equals 0, x is less than width, x plus plus. And I want to draw a, um, I'm just going to draw a point at x comma 200. And I'm going to say a stroke 255. So now I'm going to go back to the sketch, and we see there's this line going across the middle. Why is there a line going across the middle? Because I have a loop for every single x value, draw a point there, all those points are next to each other, it looks like a line. So now what I want is I want this y value to not be Perlin noise. I mean, <laughs> I want it to be Perlin noise. <laughs> the heat, the 90 degree New York City heat. So I'm gonna, first I'm going to say random height. Now look at this. Now I just got a whole lot of random crazy points everywhere. So first of all, I want to like stop this animating for a second. So there's one way I can stop it from animating, which I can say no loop. So now I have a bunch of totally random points. And what I actually want to do here is I want to connect them. So I'm going to say begin shape, no stroke, oh no, no stroke, 255 and no fill. And then I'm going to say end shape. And I'm going to draw, instead of, I'm going to say vertex. Right. I forgot what I was doing. So if I, if instead of drawing them a single point, if I say begin a shape, end a shape with a bunch of vertices, it's going to connect them all. So now I'm going to refresh this. And you can see, this is, this is what I was trying to draw to, for you on the board before. This is now essentially a graph of random values, a random value for each point x along the x-axis. And by the way, if I allow it to animate again, this is what you get. A lot of totally random values. New random values every frame. But I'm going to put that in. Now, what I want to do now is change those to Perlin noise value. So really what's going on here is the y value is a random value. So instead of y being random, what I want now is to say y equals the result of the noise function. So first, let me just plug in one point of time like noise 0. And we can see, OK, first of all, where are all the values? Well, remember, I get a value between 0 and 1. So one thing I certainly need to do, again, is map that value. And you know what? I I'm tired of mapping. It's going to be simple just to like, multiply this by height. So you can see, every time I refresh it, I get one value across. That's because as I move from pixel to pixel, I'm not moving through. I'm not moving through this noise space. I'm just staying at one point in time. So now what I want to do is I want to add an x offset variable, start that at 0, get the noise value at x offset, and go up by some amount, like 0 0.02. And now when I refresh that, you can see there's my Perlin noise graph. This is what Perlin noise looks like. Uh, when I graph it, smooth randomness as compared to <laughs> random. So you can really see the difference now. Now I want to do a few more things with this. There's a couple of things I want to do. One is, um, um, one thing is I just want to show you what happens when I change this particular parameter. So let me make this 0 0.01 instead of 0 0.02. And actually, let's do something. Oh, the other thing, let's, let's, let's loop it. So you can see I'm adding the loop back in. It's animating, but remember the Perlin noise values are fixed. So, um, so I'm always if, if x offset always starts at zero, I'm going to get the same values. So let me do something where I make uh, an increment variable, and I say that's 0 0.01. So I'm going to increase by that increment variable. And now I can do things like say, what if increment is 1? You can see what that looks like. What if increment is 0 0.001? You can see how smooth that is. And I could easily tie this to a slider. That would be a nice thing to do. Um, 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 and you can see how, how the graph changes based on that increment value. Now there's another thing I could do to this, which I think would be kind of interesting. What if I want to kind of scan across the Perlin noise space? What if I don't always want x offset to start at 0? So in this case, I could say start equals 0, x offset equals start, and then I could say the start 
also changes by that increment. Now look at this. Now I'm sort of seeing, and this is basically exactly what I did. I have a terrain generator example, which does this in two dimensions, which I recorded before I made this video, so things are a little strange and out of order. But you can go and find that if you look for a YouTube terrain generator. Um, Schiffman, <laughs> um, you can see a sort of, but this is exactly what's happening now. I'm, this is a one dimensional terrain generator. I'm moving across this space, uh, moving across the Perlin noise space over time. Boy, there's so many things I want to add to this. Um, let me think about it. Okay, one thing I think I should mention here, by the way, this kind of looks like, a, like it's like a waveform, right? Like a sine wave. I could easily, just by the way, change the noise function to sine. And notice what I get. I get a sine wave. Now, the one thing, the sine wave, unfortunately, the sine function gives me a value between negative 1 and 1. So what I really need to do is change the mapping, like uh, add height divided by 2 and multiply by height divided by 2. And now you can see the sine wave. But interestingly enough, this, these algorithms work the same way. They're just functions that, when you pass it a value that changes over time, give you a new value, whether it oscillates perfectly or it moves kind of randomly. So there's a lot of possibilities here. And in fact, you could add noise. I could also like, <laughs> I could say like noise x off, you know, times 10 plus, oh, no, 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 y equals, how come that didn't work? I want to add, oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, y is, maybe 10 isn't enough, times 100. Yeah, you can see now there's the sine wave with a lot of sort of like randomness, a little bit of randomness thrown in. Because what I actually did, and it's not offset very well, let's actually make this correct. I'm going to show you while I'm here, right? Let's say, let's say I have a noise value, which is noise of x offset. Map the noise value between 0 and 1 to between like negative uh, 50 and 50. And then let me take a uh, sine value which is map the sine wave of x offset, which goes between negative 1 and 1 to between 0 and height. And then what I want to do is say that var y equals the, those two values added together. And now you can see I have the sine wave with a little bit of noise added. And this, by the way, if you, if you took like letter forms, and you want to make them appear a little bit like handwriting, you could add a little bit of pearl and noise just to the pads between those letter forms. So you can see there's a lot of interesting possibilities here. And I could kind of do the opposite. Like I could say, well, let me make noise the primary thing and make the sine wave just like a little something that adjusts the noise. And you can see now, I don't know if this is harder to see, but there's a little sine wave in there that's kind of adjusting the noise in a sort of perfect uh, perfect amount, I think, by the way that I changed that. So there's a lot that you could play with here. So I'm kind of messing around because I'm, I'm nearing the end of the point where what I ultimately want to do is look at then, this is all about noise in one dimension. I'm drawing this graph in two-dimensional space, but my values live in one dimension. Thanks for watching this video. I'm ready now in the next video to move from one-dimensional Perlin noise to two-dimensional Perlin noise, and I'll see you maybe in that video.